To understand the recent evolution of trade, it's important to look back a few years ago, before the crisis. In order to do so, we'll have the help of a graph. On this graph, we'll have first on the horizontal axis, the passing of time from the first quarter of 2007 to the last quarter of 2010. And on the vertical axis, we'll have the value of exports in billions of dollars. To make things simpler, instead of looking at the evolution of each country, we'll have only two groups of country, the exports from developed economies and the exports from developing economies. If you remember, the first signs of the crisis appeared in 2007 and the financial sector of the large developed economy showed signals of stress with problems in some big banks. But during this year 2007, the value of export was increasing rapidly. As we see, the export from developed economy was raising as the exports of developing economies. And they kept increasing up to the first quarter of 2008 for the developed economies. The situation changed at this point of time for these economies, which started feeling the first impact of the crisis. But as we saw, the developing countries' exports were still growing and many experts were expecting that we were in the presence of decoupling. What's decoupling? It's, it's a situation where the economic development in developing economies are no more dependent of what is going on in the industrialized country. Unfortunately, in September 2008, the financial crisis became truly global and engulfed both developed and developing countries. Trade collapsed and touched the bottom in March 2009. After this date of March 2009, trade started to rebound simultaneously for the developed and the developing countries. Thus, the crisis didn't create a world recession similar to the crisis of 1929. The optimistic scenario of a V-shaped recovery for developing country proved exact. And as we see at the end of 2010, the developing countries' exports went back to their maximum level registered before the crisis. Recovery is nevertheless taking more time for industrialized economies. And at the end of 2010, their exports were still below the pre-crisis level. The evolution of trade before, during and after the crisis was closely related to the change affecting the international prices of commodities. So in order to visualize the evolution of these prices, we'll have a chart very similar to one we had before. On the horizontal axis, we'll have the passing of time from the first quarter of 2007 up to the last quarter of 2010. And on the vertical axis, we will show the price index. In order to make things easier, we normalized all prices and put them as if they were all equal to 100 in 2005. So it will make the comparison of prices much easier. We see that in 2007, the price of commodities like oil or food was raising rapidly. As a matter of fact, they raised up to very high historical level for the price of oil and also very high level for the price of food. You may remember that this high level for food products created a lot of problem for the poor developing countries that depend on importing food to feed their population. At the contrary, the price of raw material, raw agricultural material shown in red on the graph, remain more or less stable during the period. With the crisis, 
the first quarter of 2008, demand dropped and the international price started looking more as a roller coaster. And we saw the price of oil starting from a high level going back to 100, its level of 2005. The price of food also was affected. And even the price of raw material, which didn't grow that much before, started going down too. The price of food reached a minimum in the last quarter of 2008. The price of oil reached its minimum in the first quarter of 2009, just when world trade reached its bottom and started to rebound. And the price of agricultural raw material reached its minimum one quarter later. With the rebound of international trade, we also saw a recovery of international prices. But not all commodities reacted similarly. Oil and energy, for example, recuperated only part of their lost ground. And as we see at the end of 2010, they are still below the peak they had before the crisis. At the contrary, food prices returned to their pre-crisis level. As far as the price of agricultural raw materials, which, as I said, were more or less stagnant before the crisis, after the crisis, they continued increasing. And in fact, we saw that at the end of 2010, they were much higher than the pre-crisis level. As a matter of fact, those international prices continued increasing during the first quarter of 2011, which creates some worries, especially for the high price of food, because, as I mentioned, many poor developing countries depend on this import to feed their population. Let's now talk about the future, or more precisely, what we can expect from year 2011. We will focus this time on the evolution of trade volumes, as it's much easier to predict levels of activity and demand than predicting prices. So, similarly to the previous presentation, we will put this evolution in an historical context, having a new graph which will have on the vertical axis the rate of growth of the volume of trade. So now we'll have changes. On the horizontal axis, we will start in year 2005 and go up to year 2010 first. As we see, trade in 2005 was accelerating, still accelerating in 2006, started slowing down and during the crisis in 2008, it was very low, but still positive and close to 2%. Then, during the crisis, it dropped dramatically to a minimum level in 2009. This double-digit drop we registered in 2009 was the worst since the past 50 years. The growth of trade return into positive territory in the year 2010 as trade rebounded. So, what are we expecting for 2011? We cannot expect to benefit from a similar recuperation effect than we had last year. As a matter of fact, the high rate observed for 2010 was particularly due to the low level we had uh, in 2009. Moreover, as we saw in the previous graph, the price of commodities are high, which reduces demand. Thus, our forecast for this year is a growth of about 6.5% for world total. Trade for developed countries will grow by 4.5%, affected in particular, but what is happening in Japan, while the trade 
for developing countries will grow twice as fast, at 9.5%. It will be wrong, nevertheless, to think that those are mediocre rate of growth. In fact, this year, trade is returning to normality. After four years of a roller coaster from bubble to crisis, then recuperation, international trade is now returning to normality. And in fact, at 6.5%, we will still be slightly above the long-term average of 6% recorded from 1998 to 2008.